I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that the intuition you had in the basketball court you can take into here and every time you look at it, Nago and Daigo think, okay, where are the bags, right? So, let's have a look at this, right? Now, that's not a rhetorical question. Where are the points of reference? Where are the bags for this particular locus, right? Where are we measuring from or measuring to, okay? So, for this guy here, my point of reference is going to be, we looked at this one just before, 2i, right? So, let's just mark it in. Um, as I've said before, these are all on the axes, right? <coughs> so I'm just going to mark it in as 2 because it's on the imaginary. Where's our other point of reference? Where's our other bag? It's at negative 3, right? So I'm going 1, 2, 3 on the real axis. There I am. Okay? Now here are my points of reference. So now I'm saying, to begin with, find a place to stand tell me the locus of points such that when you measure your bearing to each of these you get the same angle you get the same argument okay now you traced out this locus this was the first locus we did right if you draw a line all the way through right part of this line forms the locus or parts i should say which parts Outside. It's the part on the, um, as it were, on the outside, right? So if you start from here, you can go off in this direction, you can stand anywhere there, okay? For instance, if I put a person with a compass or a <coughs> complex number as a point there, you can imagine that person there standing with their compass, looking at 2i and measuring one bearing, and then looking at negative 3 and naturally measuring the same bearing because they're on the line of sight. Okay, you see what's going on? But of course, you don't have to stand on that side. You can also stand on the opposite side. Right? So, how would we state the locus of this set of points? Okay. Um, let's start with the easy part. They both lie on this um, dotted line that I put in first. Okay. What's the equation of the dotted line? Y equals x plus two, x minus three. What's the, let's start again. Probably the easiest way based on how I drew it, based on how I drew it, is to look for two features. They'd be like, like I looked at before, gradient and y-intercept. Gradient, okay? I rise two units and I run three units. You happy with that? So it's a gradient of rise over mud two thirds, which gels with the fact that it's kind of like a gentle incline, okay? There's my gradient. My y-intercept is plus two. plus two. Okay, now, that's a good start, but I'm not finished, am I? Right, because I don't want all of the line. I need to restrict the domain, okay? So I'm going to say, it's this line for which part? Well, less than negative three, or greater than zero. Don't mix up your real and imaginary parts. Rise is, two, uh, rise is, two, is the line going up or is it going down? <laughs> going Wait, yep. so would you be able to, like, instead of using x's, would you be able to make the domain using y's? Like, uh, right. Yes, I could. I could state it in terms of range. Is it? So I could say y is less than zero or y is greater than two. In this case, stating the domain and stating the range um, are equivalent, I think. They're equivalent, um, but you'll notice they're only equivalent because it's a linear function, right? If I had like a parabola or something else like that, right? That you start to get line blurring of like which, which one is more important. And generally speaking, we talk about domain because we're thinking of x's as inputs, okay? That is like a holdover from the previous times when we were thinking of x's and y's as inputs, outputs. Uh, but it's it's sort of a tradition which is worth holding on to, okay? Because at least it's a convention that's all going to be consistent. Is it because we're working in functions? Uh, kind of, yeah. But we're not. You see, here's the thing, right? Uh, this is this function, right? I can just as easily reframe it in terms of y, right? So there's no reason why I have to make it y equals. I could make it x equals just as easily, okay? In this particular example. For that, for that. You cut the zero zero, right? There, is that a point of reference or just coincidence at part three and then you need to point it out? The second. The second. Okay. Um, 
And by the way, we didn't state we didn't state this um, equation over here either. We can state it fairly easily though. What's its gradient? Minus, 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 minus one. So therefore, the line itself is minus x. But be careful how you state its um, domain. I'd probably say, just like I have here, you do it in pieces. Okay? Don't say where you can't go. Say where you can go. That's what domain is. So I would say x can be less than 0. Or it can be between 0 and 2. That's exactly right. Right, and do say or because there's no number that has an x value that is simultaneously less than zero and between zero and two. That there's no number like that. Okay. Okay, so that's what happens when you consider the arguments being the same. Let's hijack this same diagram. We'll use a different color. What if I asked you this? So how do you, on this diagram, say it doesn't include the points going off, like beyond, like, you can't go further than that point. Right? Here? But you can't go the other way. I've included it right there. I've restricted the domain. <coughs> I've said it's between 0 and 2. I haven't said anything past 2. So I haven't stated that it can go there, so it can't. And can you say that, like, do you have to say that x does not equal 2, like, it doesn't equal 2 and... Yeah, I already have, by excluding the boundary. Oh. I don't have an equality there, you see. If I had said that... Then I'd be inclusive of 2, but I haven't said that, so I'm not including 2. Okay, same as 0. Alright, now, have a look at this guy. You're going to need to pull out some of your like complex number arithmetic when you think about how complex numbers operate, when you divide them. What happens to the arguments down here? <coughs> when you divide complex numbers, what do you do with your arguments? Minus. You subtract, right? Good. So I'm going to have this. Yep. Good question. I'll show you. Um, so. <coughs> okay. I always left off doing that because, um, because our diagram is going to get pretty busy pretty soon. But that's okay. We'll we'll try and run with it. Okay. What does what does this say that this is my locus? What does it mean? Okay. Actually, maybe I will draw a new diagram for this because this is going to make my Diagram 2, 4. Think about Z1 as one of the points on this locus, which means it should satisfy this. Okay? So what this means is, I'm saying that arg of Z1 take away 2i is arg of Z1 plus 3. Okay? Now what does this mean? This means, this part, the left-hand side means, measure the angle to Z1, measure it from 2i. Okay? So let's have a look at where that angle is. I'll keep this in green because I'm going to put another one in... Um, in black, I guess, in a minute, okay? So here's here's 2i, right here. I put my positive real axis in, inverted commas, it's, it's parallel to the positive real axis, and then I measure my angle anti-clockwise up to z1. <coughs> so this number, this angle I've just measured out, that is the argument of z1 plus, uh, minus? Minus, 2i, you okay with that? That's where the argument is. Now when I think about this guy, where's this? It's the argument to the same complex number over there, but I'm measuring it from negative 3. So I pop in my positive real axis, it's already there. And then I measure up until I'm facing at z1. So this angle down here is arg of z1 plus 3. Okay? Now to get the fact that you've got both, uh, what are these lines called? They start somewhere and then they go forever. They don't go forever in both directions. So these are called rays. Okay? Intervals have starts and ends. Rays have a start and they don't end, and then lines don't start, don't end, they just go forever. Okay? So to make sure I've got the other side of the ray, let me put another complex number on there. Let's call them one color. Let's call them Z2. Okay? So if I put Z2 here, and I'm saying it's on the locus, then I'm, I'm implying that arg of Z2 take away 2i is also equal to arg of Z2 plus 3. But where are these angles? Okay? okay, for this one, where am I measuring from? I'm measuring from 2i. Right? And I'm measuring until I'm facing at Z2. Yeah? So Z2 is over here and 2i is up here. Keep in mind, I, I prefer the principal argument. Okay? So I'm going to go this way and I'm going to measure out like so. That would give me the principal argument, right? Because otherwise I'd have to blow past pi, which would be outside the domain of the principal argument. So this black angle I've just measured in here is arg of Z2 take away 2i. You can tell me where arg of Z2 plus 3 is, can't you? Right? 
it's from negative 3, and I'm measuring down this way until I'm facing, until my compass is looking <coughs> at Z2. And so this is argument Z2 plus 3. And because the positive real axis is axes I've been drawing in, they're all parallel, right? You've just got a whole bunch of corresponding yeah. angles. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, I can't hear you, sorry. Just repeat your question. Because it has to satisfy both of the, um, the equations that you wrote. Okay, so we're gonna so we're gonna get to this case, right? We're gonna get to this case, and I will draw a new diagram because I've just completely destroyed my diagram there. Um, I didn't quite finish writing this. So what have I got here, right? This is case two. This is where I asked you, you know, now that I've gone from here to here, I've expanded out. You can see, <coughs> excuse me, the argument of this quotient is the argument of one. Take away the argument of the other, right? Now when you take away numbers. Right? Just like when we were doing this, Z1, Z2, what you're asking for is the difference. You're, you're telling me how far are these angles from each other, relatively speaking. So in other words, that's like saying, okay, take one measurement and then subtract it from the other. Like literally, that's, that's how you calculate it, right? You're like, oh, 110, 80. Okay, here I am, 30 degrees is my difference, okay? So what this is saying is, the difference between these two arguments, between these two bearings, as it were, is pi radians, 180 degrees. You're facing in opposite directions in order to get the points that will satisfy this line. Okay? So quickly, let's draw up a new argument diagram over here. We've got the same points, 2i and negative 3. So... Let's just finish this and then you can head off. This time, the place I'm going to be is still on the same line, right? It's still on the same line. But I've got to be here in the middle, right? Because now, if I take some Z1 or Z2, let's uh, I'll fill him in, I suppose. If I put Z1 on this line, right? Let's think about where these arguments are. So if I put Z1 here, okay? I pop in my line that's, that's uh, parallel to the positive real axis, like so. And then I think about my two measurements, right? One of them is going to be this way. Which angle is that? That's arg of what? Arg Z1. Z1, take away 2i. That's where I'm measuring from. 2, okay, yeah? Actually, sorry, that's the wrong spot. It should be over there. <coughs> I was thinking compass mode. Okay, there's that angle. Right, so I've measured down to look at Z1. Okay, and then to get the other one, it's going to be from here, measuring up, right? That's argument Z1 plus 3. And you can see if I put this guy and this guy together, their difference is clearly pi, right? Because one is negative this much, and this one is positive by the supplement. Okay, do you see that? Um, and obviously, because they're parallel lines, and what kind of angles are they? What kind of angles? They're co angles, which are supplementary, okay?